I want to get your opinion on something. Uh, you know, you and I both have had the privilege of interviewing people. We love asking questions yeah. in our personal life. Um, it just occurred to me, I was, I was sitting here thinking, listening to you, and one of the things we've got to do beyond being reactive, fixing it once it's happening, uh, being proactive, setting a different standard and uh, attracting others, I just want to know what you think that leaders ought to do in an interview setting. They're interviewing somebody. I recently did a talk at Entree Master Series about the intentional interview. So I basically was was teaching my process mm -hmm. for how I prepare for like a Condoleezza interview and then how mm -hmm. I conduct it. Yeah. But one of the stats I quoted in that talk was that the uh, the greatest amount of bad hires actually happen because of a poor interview. Yes. Right? So... We all understand that. that's not a shocking piece of information, but I'm just curious, what would you tell leaders maybe that they need to be looking for and maybe asking specifically in an interview setting to find out if a person has a bent towards the negative? Because it, the reason I'm putting you on the spot, A, you can handle it. Yeah. I've never thought of this myself, uh -huh. so we're going to have some fun with this. Yeah. And, and here's why I'm asking. I believe that most people are putting their best foot forward. They're putting their best sure. face on. So we're getting a little bit of acting in an interview. No question. Even people that are high integrity. No they're question. putting their It's like the first date. Well, that's what you want them to do. <laughs> they, otherwise, <laughs> right. they show up in their PJs with right. their hair all messed right. up. So, of course, of course that's right. But I still believe that, the, that, that a question is a scalpel. Right. And I wrote that in my first book. It's a scalpel. Yes. I believe that. So what would we be asking to get a sense for somebody, ah, oh boy, they may be a person that the, as soon as they get comfortable, they're in here four weeks, and all of a sudden they're just, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're a barnacle. What you want to know on that score and a bunch of others is how in touch are they with their own evil tendencies and how are they coaching themselves out of it? So if I'm interviewing you, for example. Right, that's good. Follow me. If I'm interviewing you, all of us have flaws. All of us have a dark side. That's right. All of us have negative tendencies. <laughs> the difference between Ken Coleman, the noble gentleman, the fine leader, the great interviewer, et cetera, and Ken Coleman, the guy nobody wants to work with, is how in touch are you with your own evil tendencies and how are you working against them? Yeah. So I ask questions like this. What's, your, what's the moment in leadership that you're most ashamed of and how have you oh, corrected it? You see what I mean? It's beautiful. I'm not trying to embarrass you. No, no, no. I no. want to know it's that good. you, yeah, I told, uh, I'm making this up now, of course, none of this is true of you. I told a nasty sex joke or I, I said something anti-Semitic or I gossiped about somebody. Or just, I want right. to know what did yeah. you do that Take was Take us back to a dark And moment. then I want to hear your, what I'm really listening for, because I assume everybody's got dark side. Right. What did you do to get yourself out of it? Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. I mean, I've had people say to me in interviews, I was raised in an unbelievably racist home and when I got out in the world and I began to realize that I did these four or five things I like joined a black church I mean it just went went mm -hmm. the opposite mm -hmm. direction um, so that's what I want to know is how in your case if, if I'm interviewing you I, I, I know that Ken Coleman's got flaws because, because he's a human being walking yeah. in the room yeah it's not because of our relationship right. I'm just saying I, in theory everybody I know has got flaws do you know it do you confront it what do you do to be proactive against it? Yeah, and let me and add in, another in this, thing, if go I ahead, might. Sure. I want to see, I want to watch your countenance. I want to read you as you take us back to this yeah. dark. Because if you take us to a dark place and it ain't so dark, I'm questioning that. Because exactly. here's my point. If, yeah. if I'm I telling you times where I... my gum under a table is not, yeah, well, <laughs> not I mean, the answer If I'm, I'm telling you where I've been intense and impatient and gotten on somebody because I think that they dropped the ball mm -hmm. and they were incompetent, and I just was no, very I'm, unhappy and way too intense. Yeah. As I recount that story, anybody with some decent perceptive abilities are going to be able to see, do I, as I recount the story, do I feel, is there a sense of regret about it? Right. So I, I'm just adding that to the what you just no, said. Because no, everything you said, those steps are good. But I also want to see, do, do, does it make you just a little bit uncut? Because it ought to. Yeah. I yeah. believe in grace, you and I do, and forgiveness. And but what, even when we revisit, we ought to go, oh gosh, is, I wish exactly, I could have taken exactly. that back. And what do you do with that discomfort? If you dissolve in tears, you might be an emotional, gushy person who doesn't ever have rational thought about your flaws. Yeah. Well, then combating gossip, our topic, right. uh, I want to know that you can look at something that's wrong with you and have and engage in a process to fix it. Right. So, so yeah, yeah, Not I, be a disaster, but go, hey, I feel bad about I've that. Had people, and I'm I've watched people it. get angry. Yeah, I've been on the other side of a of a one way of you know mirror situation, window situation where I'm watching and they don't know it during an interview. Oh, which which some companies do, and they'd say there are people over there watching you. You're never going to meet them. Right. I've watched them get angry. 
I've watched them say, how dare you, when they all they did was say, what have you done that you're ashamed of in leadership that you right. liked? Guy blows up. Right. I've watched people walk out of interviews. Yeah. I've watched them say, well, I've really never done anything bad. Yeah. You know, really? Yeah. 30 years in leadership, you never done anything bad. Yeah. I did something bad yesterday, probably. Yeah. I just have to think about yeah. it. So all of that is part of it. But uh, on the issue of gossip, the, the, the main issue is, do you know how to address it? We've all gossiped. Yes. We all went through you know, elementary school and high school and sure. wrote notes and said things and picked on the weak kid or whatever. The question is, have you engaged in a reconstruction project with your right. life since then? Right. And if that's, if that's yeah. happening, then there, yeah. there may be a part of a noble culture. What do you think about that? I'm trying to give some practical stuff here. This is really good. What do you think about asking about their previous job, a previous job they didn't like? Oh yeah, getting them to talk about that because yeah. before you know it, now they've let their guard down completely. And I guess I'm looking for how quickly and how yeah. how violently almost you know someone yeah. can go to criticism because that's what leads to gossip. Well, I actually encourage interviewers to lead them into criticism. Okay. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So, yes. I, again, I'll, I'll use you as an example because you're safe with me. Uh, so you've worked, let's say, some previous jobs, and I say, tell me about the leader you liked the least, yes. the least respected. Right. Now, I'm actually inviting them, in a sense, to gossip. But if they've confronted their own gossip tendencies, they're going to do this nobly. I can tell you about leaders, you know, a good man, but he had some tendencies, and here's what they were, and they, right. they just destroyed lives. Yeah. And uh, I didn't feel like I could stay in that culture. Right. And you go, wow, healthy, mature, responsible, yes, moral approach. Yes, that's a approach. great example. But I actually, I actually take them there. Tell me about the leader you respected least. Right. You know, and you can ask about what your relationship with your mother and your father and your brother and which sibling do you hate or whatever. Right, you know, right, right. that's that's so dark that I, right. you know, uh, I'm not wanting to do surgery. But I do want to know. Tell me about the leader that you've worked with or person you've worked with in your life you you at least respect. And and that's usually when the if they're going to venture into because you've asked this question, they assume you're budding up to them. They're going to come with it. And I and I I like watching them struggle even in the conversation. You bring up somebody I have a hard time with. Even at my age and, and years of experience, you'll watch me struggle a little bit to say, well, well can I? I really think probably they've, they've recovered themselves, but at that time that I was with them. Yes. And if I just let fly at that moment, you know I haven't really dealt with it. Right. Them. Boy, so that's so true. It's, it's a good way to read people. Really practical stuff there on gossip. Great stuff from Stephen Mansfield.